You have been going through your past legislation when it comes to gun rights and gun control. Uh, you've had a pretty mixed record. What makes you think that this is the right time to act? Uh, obviously, based upon the horrific action in uh, Florida, and we all abhor it, it's important to make sure that the system of notification is as strong as possible, and therefore I favor what is known as fix nicks. And uh, we sent a bill to the Senate. I did not vote for it because it includes concealed carry, and I'm opposed to that. I think that should be stripped out of the Senate bill, and that a fix nicks bill should pass the Senate and be returned to the House as quickly as possible, Sherry. Uh, Congressman, is there anything in the form of a legislation that ha has enough momentum, either in the House or the Senate, to make a difference this time around? I think there is great momentum for fixed nicks at the very least, and I would do more than that. Bump stocks, for example, and permitting the federal government to investigate uh, uh, this issue based upon the mental health of the American people. Uh, but at the very least, we should uh, make sure that fixed nicks becomes law. And let me repeat, I want to do more than that. So, so, Congressman, uh, Congress is talking a lot about this, but a lot of people, voters, are a little skeptical whether anything is going to get done. As a practical matter, the private sector is stepping in now. Even just today, we had Dick's Sporting Goods saying, we're not going to sell AR-15s anymore at all, and nobody can buy a gun if they're younger than 21 years old. Is, it, is, it, is the private sector actually overtaking the Congress in addressing this issue? Certainly the private sector is doing its part, but I think we should do our part as well here on Capitol Hill, David, and that is why I led the effort to writing a letter uh, to Speaker Ryan to suggest that we have a clean fix nicks bill on which we can vote as quickly as possible. So, so, Congressman, I want to change the subject here a little bit. Something we've talked about quite a bit, and that is taxes uh, and where things stand with taxes. You were opposed to the limitation on SALT, the state and local taxes. It went through anyway. Now we have your home state of New Jersey saying, well, maybe we'll create a charitable deduction for property taxes. Is that going to work? Uh, if I were in the state legislature, as I once was, I would vote for that. I think it's supported by most legislators in New Jersey and by our new governor, Governor Murphy. I guess the question legally is whether the IRS will permit that, and um, that's an, an open question. But certainly I favor making sure that there can be, uh, to the greatest extent possible, the deductibility of state and local taxes. So, Congressman, let's make this a little bit personal at least. You've got an election coming up like every other member of the House of Representatives does this coming November. As you go back to your district, how big a factor Actor, will the SALT issue be for you as you seek re-election? Uh, I have a suburban district. The district is highly educated. And, David, I will be judged based upon my voting record. And, uh, as you know, my voting record is clear that I favor continued deductibility of, of SALT, and I'm doing my best to move that issue forward. And, incidentally, this is also an issue at the state level in New Jersey because there is a limitation on what can be deducted from the state income tax form. And I think our state legislature and our state governor should change that as well. And on your voting record, though, right now we are seeing the support for the tax package in general is going up. A New York Times poll saying that support was at 30 plus percent just in December. Just last week, it was up to more than 50 percent. Are you concerned that that could affect you? Uh, no, Sherry. I, I've indicated to the public that I favor certain portions of the tax bill. Certainly, I think that business taxes should have been reduced. Uh, they went from 35 percent to 21 percent. Uh, but there are other aspects that I did not favor, particularly regarding SALT. And also, I don't think that we should be expanding the deficit in this country to the extent that I think that this legislation uh, may result. But there are certain parts of the bill that I favor, and I think that's why you see an increase in the polling on this topic. And when it comes to the midterm elections in November, guns being now front and center, does that give an opening to the Democrats? Uh, my record is that I favor what I have suggested, fix nicks, 
making sure there are no bump stocks, making sure we can investigate this issue uh, at the NIH and other places, and, and I'm willing to uh, go beyond that. I, I favor uh, background checks in all situations. I, I've signed on to legislation in that regard, uh, sponsored by uh, uh, Peter King here on Capitol Hill, and this is bipartisan legislation in the Senate as well, and I hope we can move in that direction. So, Congressman, finally, as you go back to your district, what are the hot button issues? I mean, is it taxes? Is it the tax cuts? Is it guns? Or is it something else altogether? And what does it tell us, if anything, about wh how this midterm election may play out? Uh, all of the above, David, these issues and other issues. Uh, continuation of health care reform. Uh, there are constituents in the district I serve who are paying uh, very high premiums. We want to ensure as many Americans as possible. So as is true of most elections, there are uh, quite a few national issues, but the ones you mentioned are certainly among those issues.